Hello, and welcome to another session of the Houdini training. My name is Gianvito Serra, and today we're going to be looking a bit about nodes and parameters. Uh, as I have mentioned before, Houdini is an application which uh, it has a very strong node-based architecture. Uh, most of what you do in Houdini is represented as and captured as nodes. Uh, unlike other applications, Houdini uh, embraces the keep in the pres pres persistency of these node networks versus deleting history and having baked out meshes. Uh, because of this, it is important that we spend a little bit of time looking a bit closer at what a node is in Houdini and what is it made out of. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to make my network view panel a little bit bigger so that we can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and add a node. Okay, so to add a node, and you saw this on the network navigation, on the network view navigation video, we press tab and that brings our tab menu and we look for a node to drop in. So for this, we're going to drop a geometry node. Okay, so we go under geometry and then we pick the geometry node, okay? Okay, so when we do this, Houdini creates a node in a network view. Okay, so let's get a little closer to it and let's take a look at what it makes a node in Houdini. So the, few th the first things that you will notice is that we have obviously the node name, which you can change by just clicking on it. Uh, we also have a few other flags that are available on the node. Uh, immediately noticeable are the top and bottom flags, which are the inputs and the outputs of the node. Okay, e Almost every single node is going to have an input. Some of them won't and all nodes will have an output. In a few cases you, they won't, but, and I'll show you a few of those examples. But the, the plugs are meant for you to wire, to wire the outputs of other nodes into the inputs of some nodes. So like I showed this before in the class, if we go to primitive and create a box, we can wire from the output plug into the input plug of the node. And again, we don't do this the other way around. We don't wire the output to the output and we don't wire the input to the input. It is only the outputs to the inputs. Okay. This allows data to flow from one node into another node. The data that flows in between the wire varies depending on the context that we're in. So in the case of uh, the this context, which is called the transform context, we or the object context, the data that travels through is the transformation data. So that's what allows us to grab one node and have that node drive the transformation of another node. In the case of geometry operators, this actually passes geometry data and the output of a node modify, is passed into the input of another node. Um, let's delete this. You notice that when we delete it, the transformation actually that we created that rotated this object went away. The best thing to think of nodes is that they're almost like little machines or little robots that you give them some information they and an input and they use that information to then give you a brand new output. Okay. You will also notice on the nodes that we have an icon, which is just a quick visual representation of what the node type is. In this case, it's the geometry node. And we also have what looks like co little color tabs on the sides in Houdini, okay? The color tabs will vary depending on the context, but for example, in the object context, the, this tab controls the display, and this tab controls the viewport selectability of the node. There we go. You can get a, you can zoom really far in into the node to see little icons that are actually associated with those. And you can even roll over the tabs to see what you can actually do by changing, by toggling in them. Okay. Another thing that we can do on inputs is that we can middle mouse 
and it will tell you and while you middle mouse hold it will tell you information about what it the input actually expects like in this case it expects the parent of this transformation okay in a lot of cases nodes are not just flat they are actually containers to other networks which contain do other processing associated with this node so if we dive inside of this node for example you will notice that there is a file operator okay which is what creates this geometry that we see here okay for the sake of simplicity i'm going to go back up with the u key and actually reset my transformation so set it back to zero okay cool let me hide the grid too so we can see things a little bit more clear and i'm going to show my wireframe cool if we dive back inside the object node you will also notice that we have a node inside however you will notice that this node is a bit different looking than the last one that we had the reason why that is is because this at this point we have actually switched to a new context uh, in this particular case we are now in the geometry context which you can kind of, kind of see a little bit here is a little bit faint to my monitor but you can see the word geometry on the network here if we press u to go back you will notice that that word changed to scene which is the context that we're in the scene context if we double click on the node and we go back inside now that changes back to geometry so what you'll notice here is that the nodes look a little bit different uh, and they also out they also have an out around it okay because for every context the actual design of the node will change to better fit what that context does okay and i'm gonna go over this a little bit here if we press tab now you'll also notice that the tab menu change we have a lot more nodes that we can pick from in this particular case is because we're in the geometry generation context uh, and the nodes actually uh, and they actually look a lot different than the nodes that we have on the top okay that's because in the geometry context you're going to have a lot of operators which allow you to control the geometry but in the object context we have a lot less operators which allow you to modify the transformation of objects okay so just like for example this is where you will create skeletons or make rigs uh, this is where you will actually have uh, your lighting and your cameras and even some stuff related to sound if you actually are doing any kind of sound working here <coughs> going back to the geometry context I will show you how to actually do some of the geometry operations so if we click on the left on the output and you can see that now we can actually the where I, the tool is actually expecting for you to drop an object we're gonna press tab and actually look for a clip as in paperclip operator okay uh, the clip operator is a geometry operator which al which uh, operates on the input geometry like i said before in the geometry context these wires are not passing transformations but are actually passing the geometry the point positions the primitive positions the polygon positions uh, the uvs etc etc now what you will notice here is that if i change my blue flag or visibility flag to the clip node now the geometry actually changes okay i actually cut the geometry right at the middle okay and as i adjust parameters on the ui you will notice that my geometry actually changes on the fly as i'm changing the par the, the node parameters okay we can even push this even further and drop a divide as in a multiply divide type of operations but this is a little different just to have you listen to the word and drop a divide node okay and if we click on the divide node and set the divisibility flag to the divide node you will notice that now i triangulated my mesh okay likewise i can change the parameters in the divide node and see uh, different types of effects being done such as the Bricken in effect, for example. Okay. Now, 
the, when you create these nodes, the thing to remember is that Houdini, they, the data that they are passing through is always live and available for you to modify. So if we still wanted to go back to the clip, we can adjust the clip and you will see that the geometry of the divide changes accordingly. Okay? We can even change the orientation of the clip to be, for example, at an angle and still see the changes of the geometry applied as expected. Now, at any point, you can also change the visibility flag into any of these nodes and see the state of the geometry at that state. Okay. Like I said before, you'll notice that we also have some different flags that are available here. So, for example, we have a pink flag that is the template flag. Okay. It's a little bit hard to tell what's going on here. So, to do that, to better explain this, I am going to put a transform node. So, press click on the output and then press tab and type transform like as if as is as if you were saying transformers and let's set the visibility flag on the transform node okay if we click on the transform node this allows us to modify the geometry by moving points around so for example we can pick on the translate edge and move our geometry to the left okay but the template flag allows us to see two nodes at the same time with one of them templated. Okay? And if we roll over the flag, you will notice that we also get a note on what that actually does. Okay? Likewise, we can even use this yellow flag, which is a bypass flag, to skip that operation from the node. But you will notice that the breaker still happens here. And a transform still happens here, even though I'm bypassing this, okay? You can even see the operation on a template mesh. So again, <coughs> the, 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 to review, nodes are basically like little, no, little robots, which take some data input and then output, and then generate an output which can be used for other nodes, okay? Nodes have flag, uh, little flags which allow you to turn in on and off different uh, states of display or of rendering. And nodes have inputs and also outputs. And in some cases, they may have no inputs and only an output, like we can see here. Actually, the file does actually have an input, but let's say, for example, if I use the grid, you will notice that the grid does not have a actual input and then the divides and in some cases they may have two inputs like the device subs has, takes a secondary input which if we middle mouse here we can see that it wants the rest geometry which it uses for a certain operation okay very cool uh, you will notice too that when you select a node you also see the geometry templated on the viewport when you and when you deselect it it goes away okay this is very typical for most different operations okay one last thing I'd like to show about nodes is that at any point, you can middle mouse on any node to see information about that node. And I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. You will notice that here, I get information, for example, about the number of points, the number of primitives, vertices, and polygons of the node that I middle mouse on. In this case, I have 80 points, 96 vertices, 12 polygons, etc., etc. okay? If we unmute the clip and we just reset this to default, mini the clip to where we have the clip, we'll notice that those numbers actually change. And this menu, this middle mouse menu, uh, pop up, is also updated to reflect information about the node. Okay, if we go back over here, we can even see the original poly counts. If we go to the breaker, you can see even like a more the higher polycons that we have on the breaker operation. Okay? You can even see our bounce change here. That, may, that actual, and again, to bring that up, just middle hold on top of a node. Okay? And the go of middle mouse to let it go. That actual uh, menu changes depending on what node your middle type of that you're middle mouse, you know. So, for example, if we middle mouse on an object node, the information that I get is about the transformation of this node, okay? If I start a COP network, 
so I'm tapping cup as in the police cup and I go in there and I drop a file cup which is an image you notice that when I middle mouse on that node I get information about the image itself like the size of the image the, co the channels on the image etc etc so it's important to remember that a lot of these operations that I'm showing are sensitive depending on your node type okay okay well we'll take a break right here uh, and i will continue in the next video to talk a bit more about parameters thank you